Okay, now that we've looked at OR probability, this time we are going to look at the AND probability. Keep misspelling probability. Probability. Now, remember OR was associated with addition. AND is associated with multiplication. And for OR probability, we had two cases. We had the mutually exclusive and the not mutually exclusive. And the same goes for AND probability. It's not mutually exclusive and not mutually exclusive, but we call it independent two independent events and uh, dependent events. Okay, so let's look at each of these cases. So for independent event, it means that our first event does not affect our second event. So let's say we have, or let's say we're rolling a die. All right, we're rolling a die. We're rolling a die. What is the probability of getting a 1 and a 6. Okay, now this is an independent event, and that is because me rolling a 1 on the first try does not affect what I roll on the second try. Right? It doesn't matter what I rolled on the first one. The probability for the second one is going to uh, be independent from the probability of the first one. So if they are independent events, I just simply multiply the two, probability of rolling a 1 times the probability of rolling a 6. And that's going to equal 1 sixth times 1 sixth, which equals, which equals 1 out of 36. Okay, so that's a good example of rolling to, to uh, independent events. Now, notice that independent events are not the same as mutually exclusive. So the probability of picking or not, of rolling a two and the probability of rolling an even number. Now, you might say that this is not mutually exclusive. Yes, this is not mutually exclusive, but this is still independent because rolling a two is, does not affect rolling an even number. So if you if you are to find the probability of this, just find the probability of the first one times the probability of the second one. You don't need to subtract something um, because the first event doesn't affect the second event. Okay, so probability of rolling a two and an even number that's going to be one sixth times one half, which is going to be one twelfth. Okay, so. That's for independent event. You just multiply the two, uh, the probability of the two events together. Now, what are dependent events? Dependent events are a little bit more complicated. It should still make sense. So, for example, let's say inside this bag, I am bringing back my marbles. couple of marbles. All right, so here are my marbles. What is the probability of picking a red marble and a black marble? Now there's going to be two cases here. Um, it's going to be independent and dependent cases, but there's another way to say these. Um, independent means, in this case, it means with replacement. Dependent means without, so this is with replacement, this is without replacement. And let me explain what that means. So if I picked a red one, okay, so that means I've picked a red one, and there's one less red inside the back. With replacement, or if I want the two events to be independent, I need to put the red back in so that 
when I'm picking the second marble, what I picked on the first one shouldn't affect what I picked what I picked the second one. Right? If if I want the events to be independent. So I'm replacing I'm replacing the the red marble back in here before I pick the black one. Now dependent event means what is so sometimes you might want to see if I pick a red one and a black one without replacement. So without replacing this, without putting this back in here, what would the probability of be probability be of picking a red one and a black one? So this is without replacement. I'm not replacing. I'm not putting the the red one back in here. So let's try and find both of these probabilities. So let's put our red marble back in here for now. Probability of red and black with replacement, okay, meaning this is going to be independent. Let's try the in independent first. Replacement, okay, so I've picked probability of picking a red times the probability of picking a black. Replace with replacement means the first pick is not going to affect the second pick, so I don't really need to do anything. So the probability of picking a red is going to be three out of how many marbles do I have? Nine marbles in there times three out of nine. All, we also have black marbles or three black marbles. Okay, and then we multiply the two, we get that's one third and one third, so that's one ninth. Okay, so that is with replacement. Now, how about without replacement? So probability of picking a red and black without replacement. So let me erase my work here. I'll just write our answer for the first question here. Okay. So that is going to be the probability of picking a red times the probability of picking a black given that I've picked a red. Okay, so this is because the first, my first pick is affecting my second pick, and let's see how it affects. So if I pick, the probability of picking a red one is still going to be the same, it's going to be 3 ninths. But the probability of picking the second black one, I'm not replacing the first one. So I have one less red marble, meaning now I have 3 out of 8. There's a total of 8 marble in there. So this is how my first pick affected my second pick. So instead of doing 3 ninth times 3 ninth, I'm doing 3 ninth times 3 eighth, which is now going to be 9, or let me reduce it first. That's actually going to be 1 eighth. Right? So you see how if I'm not replacing the marble, if I'm not replacing the marble, it's going to affect the second time I pick, which makes sense because if I've picked a red marble and I'm picking a black marble now, then it's going to, the probability is going to be different because there's one less marble in there. Okay, so you need to keep this in mind for and probability. You're you're basically multiplying the two probabilities, but if it's an independent or depending on whether it's an independent event or an dependent event, you need to manipulate your second probability so that uh, it makes sense uh, to the situation.